Um, now, an EP-ROM stands for uh, Erasable Programmable Read-Only Memory. Uh, and that would make sense to have in a prototype uh, because um, it's not meant to be a final product. If you find a bug, you want to be able to erase the data you had, put on what was new, and test it out again. And basically, it's erasable by, uh, you see these little stickers here? These are the four EP-ROMs. Uh, if you take off these stickers, there's a little window that you can see the silicon chip on. Uh, or through. If you shine some UV light in there, uh, you can erase it and rewrite whatever you'd like, which is why these are covered. Um, like I said before, uh, prototype number four did not seem to have those stickers, and that can be kind of dangerous if you wanted to keep the data in such a rare game. So there you go. You'll also know that all these all these components are uh, are soldered down. Uh, basically, this ROM or look going from Jolly Rancher's photos. This uh, whole board looks pretty exactly the same as uh, prototype number three. The one difference being that these uh, capacitors, there's one there, there's one there, uh, are just a different design capacitor. Uh, that's about it. So um, let's see, as I said, these are the EP ROMs. There's uh, your character ROM 1, character ROM 2, program ROM 1, program ROM 2. And uh, I said before in my uh, Earthbound documentary that these uh, contain two megs of ROM, uh, two megs of character ROM, two ro megs of program ROM. That is correct, but a bit of a misnomer, I should explain. Megs in uh, this sense uh, generally meant megabits. So uh, to use a parlance that uh, we would all know a little bit better, uh, this is 200 and 56 kilobytes of uh, character ROM. This is 256 kilobytes of program ROM. So, uh, just wanted to make that a little bit clear. Uh, games like Mega Man 5, Star Tropics, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 all had uh, these ROM specs of 256 kilobytes of program and character ROM each. Uh, right here is the CIC lockout chip, which is basically a CPU that uh, runs jointly with the uh, 10NES uh, lockout program. Uh, basically what that means, it's, it's the thing that gives the handshake to the Nintendo console. There was a chip in the Nintendo console that ran a proprietary program called 10NES that uh, locked out any games that did not have this CIC chip. Uh, it basically uh, sends out the correct code, the Nintendo system says, oh okay, I guess I'll play you. Now. Uh, some of the more sketchy uh, companies back in the day, like Atari, wound up finding their own way around that. But uh, once again, that's another video. <clears throat> right here, you'll see um, eight kilobytes, or yeah, eight kilobytes of static RAM. Your your battery backup to save the game, which is always important for uh, an RPG. And uh, right here is an interesting little component. That's a Toshiba uh, digital demultiplexer, uh, <laughs> which as far as I can tell, aids in decoding addresses. Uh, and that works in conjunction with this baby, which uh, is actually uh, kind of the heart and soul of the uh, Nintendo cartridge. This is an MMC3 memory management controller. Uh, it's basically a set of logic gates that allows you to switch between different programs that are contained on the chips of the cartridge here. Um, and NES, you see, uh, can only access a certain amount of ROM at a time, usually in 4 to 32 kilobyte chunks. And as I already said, you have in total uh, half a megabyte of, uh, of ROM there. So um, in order to create larger games, you'd have to have a way to access different programs on the same ROM chip when they were needed now the memory management controller basically makes that possible. Usually when you're switching between different areas, different levels in games, the MMC, in NES games, the MMC is accessing a different program on the ROM chip. Uh, this allowed more programs to be written on a single chip and make bigger games. And this process is called bank switching, but if that's getting too far in depth, then don't worry about it. Uh, this is the MMC3, which was the uh, third uh, type of MMC. Uh, and it was the most popular, uh, these were all created by Nintendo, and this was the most popular of the six custom MMCs that they made. Um, basically, 
This particular one added the ability to interrupt input lines so that you could have a split screen running at the same time as other programs were running. So, for example, in Mario Super Mario Bros. 3, you have a status uh, screen that's kind of just static uh, for the most part on the bottom part of the screen. It was split screen while the level runs on the top. Uh, that's because of this baby, the MMC3. So, you'll notice that there, since this is the uh, EP-ROM, this is a this is a a uh, prototype board. You have two more spaces for program ROM just in case you need it. Uh, other than that, you have your resistors, you have your capacitors that normally make up a, 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 a an integrated or a circuit board. Just once again for comparison, you have uh, you have your Dragon Warrior. You'll notice that these are not EP ROMs because once you sell an actual product, you do not want it to possibly be erased. These uh, are not rewritable, as far as I know. Um, you do, however, uh, have your CIC chip right there. You have your digital demultiplexer right there. You have your battery backup right there. And uh, you'll also notice that, the, well, maybe you can't see, but uh, this is an NES SA ROM board. Once again, SA ROM just means uh, it's just a different type of board, basically. And of course, what hands-on would be complete without the uh, inevitable uh, playtest with the classic box-style uh, Nintendo Entertainment System. It's just just calming music. It just makes it makes it feel happy. I guess I don't know. Anyway, uh, so you'll notice Earthbound. Uh, you also notice my TV is extraordinarily staticky. Um, Earthbound, no zero, because that, once again, was hacked in by Neo Demiforce in the ROM. Um, E-Toy Level 16 was one of the previous owners, I'm not sure which. I'm not going to delete it, though, as far as I'm concerned. It's part of the history, you know. So, uh, in fact, let's, um, let's go ahead and just continue that game. And there you go. It's all in English, oh my god, it's crazy. And I've got a cold. And 26 bucks on me, great. There you go. So, Earthbound, Earthbound Zero. And the Beatles, good morning. Copyright issues abound. Uh, anyway, so, I have, um, I've only played this game before in the, uh, in the Earthbound Zero ROM. I'm certainly gonna give it a playthrough here, but um, I would love to. I would love to. Hold on. Reset. Power. Off. Okay. I would love to um, give other people the chance to see if this ROM is. If this ROM is perhaps somehow different from the original Earthbound prototype number one that came out. Uh, now I have no equipment and no earthly idea how to dump a ROM. But uh, if someone is willing to perhaps loan me the equipment or, or let me know how else to, to get this done, please just uh, let me know via the YouTube channel, uh, contact me on clanofthegraywolf.com, uh, something, uh, and I will do it for free. I really don't care. I'll, I'll, as long as someone loans me the equipment, I'm not going to pay for whatever equipment, but I'll, I'll just upload it to the web and you can all have your cracks at it. I'm sure there are some people that are such fanatics they will find any differences uh, very quickly. Uh, I'm not that thorough, but of course, like I said, I'll give it a you know, playthrough. So, um, this game, uh, this prototype has, from every other uh, known Nintendo prototype that's out there, has genuine components, genuine board, uh, all this other stuff that got the genuine game on it, the original ROM. I really see no reason why this is not uh, the real thing and the majority of people who know on the internet agree. Uh, so, at the very least, there are three, possibly four, as I said, Earthbound uh, Zero prototypes out there. Um, uh, I'm not going to uh, do a Let's Play or anything of this. If you want a Let's Play of, of Earthbound Zero, uh, please, please check out Chugga Conroy on YouTube. He does an amazing Let's Play. He does a lot of amazing Let's Plays, but uh, kind of beside the point right now. Uh, and in the meantime, I'm just going to keep it safe. Uh, I kind of consider this an honor to have 
such a rare game in my possession. It was never released uh, ever, so there's really three or four of these out in the wild. Uh, <laughs> I kind of go into Indiana Jones thinking, oh my god, it belongs in a museum, and maybe, maybe one day it will be. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, I'm going to keep it out of the sun, keep it out of the cat boxes, you know, whatever. Um, just take care of it. So, Earthbound fans, do not worry. It is safe with me. Uh, so, uh, I guess I'll see you guys around. Thanks for, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, play test with the old classic box style NES. This NES sucks. It really does. <laughs>